Here we have another example of how we work with bomb calorimeters and how we calculate various things using combustion reactions in bomb calorimeters. Remember, when you do a combustion reaction, you do create gases. Those gases will expand when they're heated. And that's why we need a bomb calorimeter to limit that expansion, to not just limit it, but just prevent the expansion altogether. Because when gases expand, they require heat. They do work that requires heat, which takes heat out of the reaction. So not all of that heat ends up in the calorimeter, so we'll get a reading that wouldn't be correct. So we want to make sure that we use a bomb calorimeter to prevent that from happening. Now what we're doing here is we're taking a 71.2 gram sample of ethanol, and we combust it in a bomb calorimeter with an unknown heat capacity. So we don't know the heat capacity. What we're trying to do here is determine that heat capacity, which is ultimately what they're telling us to do determine the heat capacity. So what we're doing is we're taking a known substance with a known heat enthalpy. So the enthalpy of the reaction of, uh, of ethanol is equal to about minus 1235 joules per um, uh, kilojoules, I should say, not joules, but kilojoules um, per mole or per reaction. So typically, they, well, they, we don't have to write it like that. We can just simply write it like that, saying that's the amount of, that's the change in the enthalpy by doing a reaction of one mole of the substance. So we do that because when we make a new calorimeter, we want to determine the heat capacity of that calorimeter. So we put some solution or some water in it. Uh, we put it all together. We put a known substance in there, combust it, measure the temperature change, and from that, we should be able to uh, determine what the heat capacities of that calorimeter. So how do we do that? Well, you put the reactants inside the portion here that contains the volume of the, of the gases. So you put a little spark in there, you ignite it, the combustion takes place, heat is generated. Since no work is done, all that heat will then end up in the calorimeter, causing the temperature of the calorimeter to go up. Of course, we're going to need some sort of thermometer to measure the temperature change of that reaction, of that calorimeter. Okay, now, the equation we use for that is that the mc delta t, which is the heat gained by the calorimeter, is equal to the change of the heat exchange in the reaction, meaning the heat given off by the reaction. And how do we calculate the heat given off by the reaction? This is equal to the negative of the enthalpy change in the reaction, that would be per reaction, multiplied times the reaction, divided by the number of moles in the reaction. Because what we're doing here is, if there's more than one mole of the ethanol in there, we need to take that into account. And then finally, we multiply that times the mass of the sample, divided by the mass per mole, which is the molar mass, mass per mole. So this basically tells us what fraction of a mole that we have in our sample in order to very, cal very carefully calculate the change in the temperature and the heat that was given off. All right, what are we looking for in this case? We're looking for the MC, so let me indicate that. We're looking for the heat capacity of the calorimeter, which is the MC portion in that equation, which means we're going to have to divide both sides of the equation by the change in the temperature in order to calculate the heat capacity, the MC. So we're going to divide this by delta T, this by delta T, and we're going to divide the whole thing here by delta T, and so when that cancels out, we're left with just the MC, the heat capacity of the calorimeter on the left side. Now, we're not going to use this part of the equation. We're going to use this part of the equation. We're going to set this equal to this. So now what we're going to do is plug in all the numbers that we have. So we have a known quantity right here. We have an enthalpy of minus 1,235 uh, kilojoules per reaction. Notice that the negative will negate the negative. This will become a positive quantity because, of course, the heat capacity of the calorimeter is positive. Multiply times the ratio of the reaction divided by the number of moles in that reaction. So in the reaction, we'll only have one mole of ethanol in the equation. Remember that we have ethanol, C2H5OH, plus oxygen gas that will react and give us carbon dioxide plus water vapor. If we want to balance this, we're going to need two of these. We're going to need three of these, which totally gives us seven oxygen on the right side, which means we need seven on the left side. So seven over two oxygen, moles of oxygen gas will balance the equation. Notice only one mole 
of ethanol in the equation, so divide by one mole of ethanol, times the mass, which uh, let's see here, we have a 71.2 gram sample, and now we divide by the molar mass, and conveniently, I pre-calculated there to be 46 grams per mole, 46 grams per mole, and then we have to divide the whole thing by the change in the temperature. And notice that the calorimeter went from 20 degrees centigrade to 65 degrees centigrade, which means the delta is 45 centigrade degrees. There we go. And now we're ready, 45 centigrade degrees, and now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So we have 1235 times 1 times 71.2 divide by 46 and divide by 45. So altogether, we have ourselves a calorimeter with a heat capacity of 42 point, hmm, round it off, let's say 42.5 kilojoules. So this is 45, what did I get? No, 42.5, slightly off here. Okay, 42.5 kilojoules per centigrade degree. So this calorimeter, you can add 42.5 kilojoules to it and will only go up by one centigrade degree, which is the heat capacity of our calorimeter. And that's how you can determine the heat capacity of calorimeters. You have a new calorimeter, you put a known quantity in there, a certain amount of a known quantity, you combust it, you measure the rise in the temperature, you know the enthalpy change of the reaction, calculate it out, and there's your um, heat capacity of your new calorimeter. And now you're ready to go and try some unknown substances now that you know this. And that's how you do that.